are the teams that you've really enjoyed kind of going through this process with? I want to say, you know, just comes to mind right away is the New York Giants, you know. Went out there for a 30 visit and they came for a private workout as well as, you know, showing up on pro day. Coach Dable, uh, Mr. Shane, uh, Coach Kafka, Coach Tierney, just great guys and great football guys. So it was just awesome to be with them. All right, Dano, you know all about quarterback speak. Break that down for me. What did they just say? I mean, they both are very interested in the Giants, and it's almost like jockeying for each other. Molly, I would say this. Outside of the Minnesota Vikings, I don't think the Giants can be any less aggressive than them. Mm. What, What I mean by that is, like, they have to be the second most aggressive team going up to try to go get their quarterback. I don't think it's likely because I do think one, two, three are going to stay put. The way I look at it like this is uh, this way, Molly. Number one, Daniel Jones has never played front to back in a season in his five years. Number two, he's missed 18 games in the last three years. Number three, the most touchdown passes he's ever had in a season were 24. He's broken 15 once in his five years. So his cap hit is $42 million in 2025. The Giants are not in an ideal situation when it comes to that. But I don't think it's realistic for them to sit there and go, we are just content. They have to go be aggressive. And it will make their team lesser asset-wise in the future. But to sit here and say a quarterback that's thrown for over 15 touchdowns in five seasons more than once to be your guy is unrealistic. They have to be aggressive. I completely, completely agree with you on that. And here's my thing. We know that the Giants need a wide receiver. We need, they need wide receivers. They need pretty much everything. But the thing that I think everybody's missing, Dan, is Brian Dable and what he was able to do in his first year with Daniel Jones. Now, Daniel Jones' durability has been a huge sure. question mark. Obviously, you just pointed out he only threw more than 15 touchdowns just once in his five-year career. We get all of that. I think the, I think the, the, the die is cast with, with, when it comes to him. But... Everybody keeps talking about receiver. I'm of the mindset, get the damn quarterback. You can work out the receiver later. You know, I trust that Brian Dable, if you give him a quarterback that knows what the hell he's doing and has the skill set, the moxie, and everything else that comes with it to make things happen, I think that he'll figure it out along the way. But if you don't have that quarterback, it don't matter who your receiver is. It doesn't matter what your tight end is. It doesn't right. matter. It doesn't matter because the quarterback will mess it all up. My attitude is you do everything you can to go get a quarterback, especially with what you've been talking about. We've got Williams. We've got Daniels. We've got May. You just mentioned McCarthy. Why on earth, if you're the Giants with a top six pick, that you wouldn't grab a quarterback, considering what's being said about the availability at the quarterback position in this draft? Yeah, the challenge for the Giants is going to be, is New England really willing to move off number three? I don't think they are. I think they're willing to play the game, and I think they're willing to, like, you know, have the phone calls come in to them and feel good. But if you're New England, are you really going to move off the opportunity to draft one of these three kids that is wildly talented and then rebuild your roster? So if you're the Giants and you can't get into that top three, how do you get to four? And if you're Arizona and you're sitting there, Stephen A. Molly, this is the problem with the Giants, though. If you're Arizona and you're four, Mm-hmm. Minnesota is going to come swinging the absolute hammer. Take yep. our number 11 pick this year. Take the 23 pick this year. Take our number one next year. The Giants don't have that capability. They just hold on. They, okay, they, hold they on. Realist- hold on. So Arizona's sitting hold there. On. You think the Minnesota Vikings would do that? The 11th, the 23rd, and a first round pick next year? For I, I can understand if, if it's one of the, if, if if it's for one of the top two picks. But outside of that, you think Minnesota would do all of that for somebody other than Williams or Daniels? Oh, I think they would do it for Drake May in a heartbeat. If you, oh if, I think okay. that if Minnesota could take 11, 23, and the number one next year to go to number three, I think they would do it in a heartbeat. I wouldn't if I was New England, but I think they would do it in a heartbeat. All right. Dan, let's dive into this. Who would you say, J.J., Drake, Michael Penix, who's the best fit for New York? The best fit for the New York Giants is Drake May, mainly because I think he's the best fit in both New England and New York. Two reasons. One, style. Two, timeline. The style of play. Okay, so no offense 
in the NFL has less explosive plays since Daniel Jones took over at quarterback than the New York Giants. Drake May loves to throw the ball downfield. He's very good at it. Brian Dable loves to throw the ball downfield. So I like the marriage style-wise when it comes to play. The element of the quarterback run and the athletic quarterback go back to Daniel Jones' first season with Brian Dable a little bit, but even more so Josh Allen. Number two, the timeline. Drake May goes to the New York Giants. He immediately takes basically every rep from the day they select him in this offseason program because Daniel Jones is still recovering from ACL surgery. Then season comes, Daniel Jones can be your starting quarterback. Great, hurrah, fine, figure it out. And then Drake May can sit. There's no pressure to get him on the field right away. And if you want to tell me that Drake May plays the last game or two or something like that, I'm cool with it. And then 2025 comes, and they can make a decision of, Daniel Jones didn't play good enough, we're going to Drake May. Or, you know what, Daniel Jones played solid football, we can be patient and let Drake continue to develop. I think that's why I sit there and say New England, or New York is probably the ideal place for me, for Drake, or New England, because they have Jacoby Brissett. So do you believe that the difference between May and a guy like J.J. McCarthy is that basically Drake May loves to throw the football downfield, and that's what Brian Dable would love. Is that Does it really come down to the, it for you on that level? Uh, no. It comes down to me on the level of you're trying to project what they can be and not what they are. There is mm. that. And I think if both guys max out, Drake becomes the better player because he has more uncoachable physical traits. Um and if J.J. Max out, he's probably like Kirk Cousins. I think if Drake May Max is out, he's Big Ben. We always love the surprises in the drafts, the trades, all of it. I can hear the music in my ear. Which team do you think will provide the biggest surprise in tonight's first round? Yeah, I think it's going to be the San Francisco 49ers back half of the first round. We've all attached teams that are there like the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs to a wide receiver. I could see San Fran taking a wide receiver. Maybe it's A.D. Mitchell. Maybe it's Xavier Worthy. Maybe it's Brian Thomas out of LSU. The, the, the bank for Brandon Ayuk continues to grow when it comes to how much you're going to have to potentially pay him. And they have Debo. And the Brock Purdy contract is coming. And to remind everybody, he is not a first-round pick that they get to pick up the fifth-year option and wait. The payment is going to come next year. And it's going to be very difficult to afford Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Brock Purdy, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey. And I could see San Francisco taking a re surprise first-round receiver at the back half of that first round and then entertaining moving Brandon Ayuk to a team that has a young, cheap, inexpensive quarterback and take a pick, give it to San Francisco, and moving Ayuk.